in developing the Eat Lancet report, the first step was to define a healthy diet. And to do that, we used literally hundreds of publications from different kinds of studies from around the world. And in the end, the evidence shows clearly that a diet that emphasizes plant sources of foods, it doesn't have to be necessarily vegan or vegetarian, but predominantly plant-based will be a healthy diet compared to the high animal source diets that much of the world is eating now and much of the world is aspiring to. We found that many individuals, organizations from companies to cities and states and even nations are using this report to examine what they're doing. Uh, the next steps will depend on where you are and who you are, but the main idea is to have a goal, a, a roadmap, so that everybody can, can contribute to a healthy and sustainable diet for future generations. In moving toward a healthy and sustainable diet, it's critically important that we keep supply and demand in balance. If we produce too much healthy food and nobody eats it, well, the farmers and producers are going to go broke, and that would not be a good solution. So we need to work at the same time at increasing demand for healthy, sustainable foods and also being able to produce them so they're available in an affordable, uh, an affordable way for, for everybody around the world. Uh, farmers will play a critical role in producing foods that are going to be healthy and sustainable for today's population and especially for the additional 2.5 billion people that will be on the world by 2050. Uh, the exact steps that farmers need to do uh, will differ depending on where they are, their lands, their resources, the opportunities, uh, and that is going to require the uh, creativity of everybody. There's no single solution. This diet can play an important role in restoration. Uh, as it turns out, uh, it would be extremely valuable to have more foods that come from trees, for example. Uh, nuts are, are very healthy. Oils can be produced by trees that are very healthy. Uh, uh, pretty much all the plant-based sources can be produced on land that is restored. So it's, uh, it is really critical that we look at every square meter of space on the earth and say what is really the best use we can make of that space for producing foods that are both healthy and that will restore and ensure the sustainability of that square meter. One of the things we're looking at now is the, whether the foods we eat as children or adolescents influence long-term health and well-being. And as it turns out, that's a very critical period in life. Uh, what we see, for example, the diets of adolescent girls uh, affect their risk of breast cancer decades down the road. Uh, and it turns out that uh, higher red meat consumption is related to uh, greater risk of breast cancer. And on the other hand, higher uh, fruits, vegetables, whole grains that are high in fiber are related to lower risk of breast cancer. So um, it's, uh, what we eat during that period is really critically important for the rest of a person's life, but it also still matters what you're eating at age 70 or 80 in terms of your risk of uh, cardiovascular disease and diabetes later in life. So this healthy eating is really a lifelong process. We're finding uh, that a healthy diet uh, uh, we're finding that what we eat also determines how our cognitive function will be maintained throughout life. Uh, and in reality, what happens is that even after age 25 or so, we're slowly going down in cognitive function, sadly. Uh, but we can change the rate of that decline so that by the time we get to be 70 or 80, what we've been eating over the previous years has made a really important difference. What seems to be particularly important is a high intake of a variety of fruits and vegetables along with healthy whole grains uh, and uh, mostly plant-based sources of food.